Good morning, grade four students. How are you? This is our English lecture number eight for week 27. In this lecture, we're going to read and spell words with three letter blends. Summarize a paragraph using main idea and details. Recall the features of a narrative nonfiction genre. Find the meaning of unfamiliar words using context clues. And in the font, you can refer to phonics practice book, page 45 till 49, and the reading writing workshop, pages 122 till 125. So uh, as we said, the table of contents, we have phonics, vocab, and uh, lesson rescuing our reefs. Phonics. What is a three-letter blend? A three-letter blend is a group of three consonant letters at the beginning of a word. Each letter makes its own sound. For example, I have here the word throat, th, t, h, r, the, the letters in red. These are the three letters, the three consonant letters. So t, h, r make, make the sound th, th, throat. Also with the th, I have a thrill, thrift, throb, through. Second uh, three blend, three letter blend, I have skr, skr, screw, skr, script, skr, screech. Next, I have splotch, spl, 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 splotch, or splashing. Here I have shr, shrimp or shr, shred, shr, shrink, or shr, shriek. Here I have str, they make the sound str, straps, strand, str, straighten. And the last one I have spr for spr, sprawl. Also with the spr, I have a sprout and sprang. So these are the three letter blends that we need to uh, study. So with the th throat, this is a picture of a throat. This is the meaning of th throat. This is the throat. Sometimes you would feel pain in your throat. Th thrill. Thrill means exciting, thrilling, exciting. Th thrift, thrift. Being careful on how much money you spend. We can say it is a thrift to keep coupons. These are coupons or tickets where you can get uh, free or you can save some money if you do, if you visit this shop, for example. So we say thrift. It's a thrift to keep uh, coupons. Throb. What is the meaning of a throb? It's a beat or sound. Actually, it's a beat or sound that that is a, a pattern, pattern like the beat, the beats of your heart. We say my heart throbs. Throbs means it's making a pattern beats. Here I have the word. Here I have the word through through just like for example the arrow um penetrated the wall it it goes through the wall we say through next group of words i have screw what is the screw this is a screw this is an example of a screw i also have a script for example we say a, a musical script or maybe a story can be written as a script, so it can be uh, performed as a play. Screech, what is the screech? It's the sound that the tires make. This is the, can be used as a sound effect. We say tire, screech, screech. Next, I have shrimp, shrimp. I also have here, Shred. Shred is like when you cut papers like that, like that. We say shred. I shred the paper in a shredding machine. 
shrink, shrink to become smaller in size. Look at this pants. This is, of course, a joke uh, or a fake picture. They like this pants uh, shrank a lot when it was washed. Shriek, shriek is a loud sound. Shriek. Here I have a straps, straps. These are the straps like the straps of a camera or the straps of a um, purse, for example. Strand, a strand of hair. This is a strand of hair, for example. We say strand, strand of hair, of hair. Let's do some practice. Write the spelling word that best complete each sentence. This is, can be found on page 46, phonics book. A uh, lot of the old rope fell on the floor. A, uh, we can say strand, strand of the old rope. Cutting coupons is a sure sign of what? Thrift. Please blank your room before your friend arrives. Tidy or straighten. She will what with laughter at the funny joke? She will shriek with laughter. We must go to blank the tunnel to get into the city. Of course, it's the word through. Is that a messy what on your on your white sweater? Is that a messy splotch? Splotch like stain. I do not want my favorite jeans to what in the wash? To shrink. The kids are what happily in the little tub? The kids are splashing happily in the little tub. We watch the cat lazily in the sun. We watch the cat sprawl lazily in the sun. To sprawl is to lie down uh, with all your parts, like your hands and your feet are wide open on the ground. If you hit the brakes too hard, the tires will screech, of course. My what was scratchy after singing at the concert? What would hurt after singing or talking too much? throat the play was a big hit because the what was so funny because the script was so funny the leather what hung down from the saddle the leather straps another exam another uh, practice for the words we have which word means jumped or leaped i have the word sprang sprang Clam or lobster, shrimp goes in the pattern. A pleasure or excitement, thrill. A tear or rip, shred. Push or grow, sprout. Pulse or beat, throb. Nail or bolt, screw. These are the vocab words. I have the word crumpled, crumpled droughts droughts ecosystem ecosystem extinct extinct flourished fragile imbalance ripples crumbled let's watch this video crumbled if something crumbled then it broke into small pieces so when something crumbled, it means it's broken into small pieces. For example, the old brick wall had crumbled over the years. It means it, it was broken into small pieces. Think of this question. What is a synonym for crumbled? Second word, uh, word I have, droughts. Droughts are long periods of dry weather without rainfall. For example, because of the lack of rain, farmers' crops died during the droughts. Think of this question. In what part of the world are there a lot of droughts? Think of this question. So as you can see in the picture, there is no rain and the crops died, withered, because there's no water, no rain. Ecosystem, I have the word ecosystem. An ecosystem is all the living and non-living things in an area. For example, a reef 
ecosystem can be disrupted if you remove one species that lives in it. This is a reef. This is a reef ecosystem. Okay, if we if you remove if you remove, for example, the coral reefs, then the whole ecosystem would collapse. What are some other examples of ecosystems? You should study, you should have studied this in science. Extinct. Something that is extinct, it means uh, it no longer exists. For example, the American buffalo was hunted so much that it almost became extinct. Name an animal that is now extinct. So this is an animal that is almost, as they said, extinct. And I want you to name more animals. I'm sure that you know more, one, more than one example about animals that are now extinct. Flourished. Something that is a flourished, something that is a flourished, thrived or grew strongly. For example, the sunflowers grew tall and flourished in the rich soil. What is a synonym for flourished? Fragile. Something that is a fragile is delicate and tends to break easily, just like eggs. Eggs are fragile. Also, glass is a fragile. Tom held the nest carefully because he was afraid that fragile eggs might break. This is a question for you. What is an antonym for fragile? Next, I have the word imbalance. An imbalance in something means that its parts are not in an equal or steady or secure position. For example, too much algae created an imbalance in the pond's ecosystem. How are imbalance and inequality similar? So imbalance means not equal. As you can see in this picture, there's a lot of algae and the frog can barely swim. Here I have the word ripples. Something that ripples forms small waves. For example, the water ripples around the swimming dog. Let's watch this small clip. Ripples. Something that ripples forms small waves. Do you see how the word ripples actually rippling? Uh, question, if a flag ripples, is the air windy or still? The, those were our uh, words. Now this, um, this page is not in your book. So let's solve it together. The water rippled after a stone was tossed into it. Right or wrong, true or false? Of course it is. True. Number two, animals can easily find water during droughts. I don't think so, it's false. Number three, you can find extinct animals in the wild. How come they're extinct, they, they no longer exist? So false. Many plants have flourished in a dark room. I don't think so because in order to flourish, you need sun and good soil. So this is false as well. Glass is more fragile than brick. Yes, of course, a brick is like stone. So this one is true. Number six, a cookie that crumbled would, would leave a mess. Yes, of course, because it will be broken into small pieces. Number seven, an ecosystem consists of one animal. I don't think so. It's, it's all the living and non-living in the area. An imbalance is when things are equal and stable. That's completely the opposite. It means they are unequal and unstable. Let's watch this small video. Natural connections. How are all living things connected? All living things are connected by their shared needs and often shared habitats. Animals need to eat. Salmon provide bears with the nourishment they need to survive. Animals also require shelter. 
This nest is high up so that the eagle's eggs are protected from predators. The penguin chick finds shelter with its parent. A species can't survive unless it can keep its young safe and healthy. So according to this video, they're telling us that animals need food, they need shelter and protection if they are to survive. And all animals are connected. This will lead us or will take us to our lesson, Rescuing Our Reefs, on page 122. Let's watch this small video just to learn how are reefs, what are reefs and how are they formed. A coral reef. It can be one of the liveliest places on earth. But what's really surprising is how much more goes on here than meets the eye. Even the corals themselves are alive. They're made up of tiny animals called coral polyps, distant cousins of jellyfish. So just want to pause just to tell you something that, as they said, these coral reefs are made of tiny animals called polyps they are the ancestors or the cousins of jellyfish it means they are of the same species as the jellyfish of tiny animals called coral polyps distant cousins of jellyfish hundreds even Thousands of polyps can make up a coral. And this impressive reef, they built it millimeter by millimeter. How? A polyp is mostly stomach with a mouth on top. It sits in a hard skeleton that's part of the reef. The polyp takes in dissolved minerals from the water and mixes them with proteins. Then it rises up out of its skeleton, leaving space below. It deposits calcium carbonate, also known as limestone, into this space. Over time, each little polyp not only builds its own skeleton, but adds to the structure of the reef. So what gives the polyp the energy for all this building? A unique partnership. Inside most reef building polyps are tiny algae called zooxanthellae. They use energy from the sun to photosynthesize, producing up to 95% of the food the corals need. As animals, the corals emit nutrients valuable to the algae too, and also give them a protected place in which to live. This trade-off benefits both the algae and the corals. It's called the symbiotic relationship. The algae are even responsible for the colors we identify with corals. So regarding, regardless of the scientific terms that they have used, I just want you to know that on the coral reef, there's something called algae. And this algae provides the nutrients uh, for the for the coral coral reef and and um, and then the coral reef is is providing uh, shelter for the algae. As we said, there is a chain. Uh, animals just like they like help each other in an ecosystem. They are related to uh, to each other. You cannot remove one item and then uh, expect that the ecosystem will uh, will evolve. If you remove one item, it will uh, collapse sitting so this is um, this lesson is about a photographer from the nature conservancy who who's going to take picture of a reef and to study 
whether the reef is surviving or is being disrupted or, or, or if it's being uh, dead, for example, in order to save it. Sitting on the side of the boat, the photographer fixes her, her. so she, uh, the photographer is a she, scuba tank and mask. She waves to a man in a fishing boat. Then she dives backwards into the clear waters of the Florida Keys. She swims, breathing through her regulator. A large, colorful coral reef is laid out before her eyes. Her eyes. Sea anemones, red hindfish, gaudy parrotfish, yellow angelfish, and other animals ignore her as they go about their business. Life in this reef has flourished and grown. This is an example of a sea anemone. It's like a colorful plant. Uh, red hindfish, just like another example of fish, gaudy parrotfish is also another kind of fish, and yellow angelfish. So they're just telling us here that there's red, color, colorful, that the coral reef is all colorful because of all the plants and all the animals in it. Connections. The photographer knows the plants and animals in a reef ecosystem need each other to survive. Reefs are made up of billions of tiny animals called coral polyps. What are coral polyps? These are plant-like algae live inside the coral. The algae use a process called photosynthesis to turn energy from the sun into food for themselves and the coral. In return, the coral gives the algae a home and the carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis. Algae are a part of the food chain called producers. Producers make their own energy. So algae, these are what producers, the, the whole idea here is that you have to realize that all the animals and the plants in an ecosystem are connected. They need each other in order to survive. Now, this one here is called um, writing frame here. This one is called writing frame. We're going to use it in order to make a summary at the end of the uh, lecture. A photographer from the Nature Conservancy takes pictures of the reef. All plants and animals in the reef ecosystem need each other to do what? They need each other to survive. Billions of tiny animals called, what are these billions of tiny animals? They are called coral polyps, make up the coral reef and algae live inside the coral. Algae produce food for themselves and for the coral as well. Okay, so th this is like a summary for these two paragraphs. Let's continue. This is a parrotfish. This is a picture of a parrotfish. The photographer sees a blue and yellow parrotfish nibbling at the coral, like eating. She takes a picture. The parrotfish breaks apart the coral to get the algae-filled polyps inside. So the parrotfish feeds on the polyps inside the coral. In a food chain, the parrotfish is a consumer because consumers cannot produce their own energy, their own food. As the parrotfish eats the algae, energy is passed through the food chain. Okay, so the, the algae needs the coral and the coral needs the algae and the parrotfish needs the algae. See how they are all connected? In the distance, the photographer notices the long silver body of a barracuda lurking. The sea grass ripples in the current, swaying back and forth. It almost hides the hungry predator. She snaps a photo and swims on. So how can we summarize these two uh, uh, paragraphs? What is the main idea? Is that the parrotfish eat the what? The parrotfish eats the, should be eats, 
or could be parrotfish. This is a plural. Eat the algae. We can say that. They are an example of a reef food chain. This is how we can summarize the whole two paragraphs in just a few lines because I can, I'm only talking about the main idea and the main details, you know, like supporting details, not too much details, only the important ones. Coral bleaching. The photographer shoots more photos as she swims. The reef must have looked like this hundreds of years ago, but then she stops and stares at a big area of bleached white coral. Bleached means white. Once colorful, the whitish coral now looks like the broken pieces of a crumpled castle. Coral depends on a natural balance to stay healthy. Climate change and pollution can cause an imbalance. This is what will cause the coral leaf to bleach or become white. Some areas have dried up from droughts, while others had more rain. Too much sun and warmer ocean temperatures can cause coral bleaching. If pollution gets into the water or the water gets too warm, the relationship between the coral and algae breaks down. The algae stop making food and the coral would eject the algae. The algae are what give the coral its color. The coral loses its color it starves because it needs the algae to make food for it. So here they just showed you that chain, that chain that where uh, each item in the ecosystem needs the other item. So as a summary, we can say that the photographer sees a big area of bleached or white coral. Coral depends on a natural balance to what? To stay healthy or to survive. Two things that can cause an imbalance, these are climate change and pollution. Let's continue. Many plants and animals depend on the coral for food and shelter. As more and more coral reefs die, many animals and plants that live in these reefs may become extinct. The beautiful reef the photographer had seen earlier would resemble the white crumbling reef before her. So the, the photographer here is afraid that the colorful reef will become just like the bleached one. Balancing act. She turned and swam back to the boat. Later today, she would send her photographs to the Nature Conservancy. It's an organization that works to rescue our fragile reefs. Scientists there are trying to rebuild the reefs by attaching small pieces of staghorn coral to concrete blocks. What are these staghorn? Staghorn coral is used to grow new coral. So just like they are planting new corals, once the coral grows, the blocks are planted in the reefs. The photographer hopes her pictures will help spread the word. They show the relationship between pollution, climate change, and coral bleaching. She breaks it through the water surface and climbs into the boat. I got some good shots of the healthy reef and the sick reef. She shouts to her partner. Once aboard, she immediately begins putting her photos on her laptop. So uh, this is the end of our lesson. How can I summarize these uh, few paragraphs? I can say many plants and animals depend on the coral for food and shelter. This is one important idea. Second one, one way conservancy scientists are rescuing the reefs is by rebuilding them. Remember the staghorn? Scientists attach small pieces of a staghorn coral to con concrete blocks. When the coral grows, the blocks are planted in the reefs. The photographer hopes her pictures of the healthy reef and the sick reef will help spread the word about the relationship between pollution, climate change, and coral bleaching. So our skill is about summarizing. When you summarize, you retell the most important details in a paragraph or section of a text. Summarize sections of rescuing our reefs to help you understand the information. You can go back to the writing frames to do your summary. 
context clues, we've, we've done this before. It's how we can find the meanings of some words using context clues. For example, but he's not alone, number one. He's not alone in his mission for a nice garden. We should read the sentences, underline the context clues that help us understand the meaning of the word in bold, which is mission, and then write the word's meaning on the line. So what make us, what make us find uh, um, or guess the meaning of the word mission? The whole sentence, if you read the whole sentence again, you would understand that mission means goal. As the worms burrow through uh, the soil, they create passages that allow air and water to pass through. So as the worms burrow means, because they're saying through the soil, they create passages, creating passages in the soil. So apparently, burrow means dig. So creating passages is what give us the meaning of the word borrow. Bill begins to plow the area to get ready for planting seeds. He makes grooves in the dirt with his tool. What will make us understand the word of the, the meaning of the word plow? It's make grooves in the soil. Making grooves means like plowing. Uh, this is the end of our lecture. I hope you find it uh, informative and uh, see you during our Zoom.